Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Boy, that intro was short, wasn't it? <laughs> welcome to the Rick Elts Real Estate Show. This is your Monday morning live edition. Kind of tee things up for the rest of the week and see what's happening. And uh, I hope you got to see some of the northern lights that were out there on Friday. I did not. Man, am I kicking myself. I wish I would have been camping at Lost Dutchman because I saw some photos from there that were phenomenal. In Washington State, my friends have been sending me pictures all weekend. Unbelievable. Didn't disrupt our electronics like uh, some feared. It did slow down some of the uh, satellite transmissions from uh, Starlink. So nothing alarming, but a huge electromagnetic storm just blasted us. And uh, we survived. So we are here to see another day. Now, what am I saying when it says, uh, good morning, John. Welcome to the show. Here we go. Yun, he's the chief economist for National Association of Realtors. It's impossible for home sales to remain low. We're going to do a little deep dive on that. Um, keep in mind, Yun is the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. His track record of being right um, is not very strong, uh, but he can be right every once in a while, just like any of us can. So his feeling is, Sales are currently at a 30-year low. Long-term growth in the U.S. population ensures more elevated home buying activity in the near future. Now, I don't have any data to go back 30 years, um, nor would I think I want to because I don't think it means anything. But he's saying sales are at a record low. But he also says here that given the long-term growth of the U.S. population, there's no way home sales can remain historically low for much longer. Now, that's statistically true. Although home sales at a 30-year low as buyers face higher borrowing costs and stubbornly low inventory, housing options on the market are beginning to increase. We're going to look at that. To get markets moving, he said they've been advocating for a variety of measures in Congress, such as giving mom and pop investors an incentive to sell to first-time home buyers and increasing the capital gains exception on the sale of a primary residence. I do agree with that. A lot of mom and pop investors have a lot of uh, homes out there. I say give them a capital gains break. I've said that on the show a couple of weeks ago and uh, get some more inventory out there and uh, give the average home seller a break on capital gains. Although I don't think that's going to make that big of a difference. <laughs> There's another idea floated out there now by, uh, by our president saying that he wants to give $400 a month to new home buyers for two years to help them with the cost of housing. What's going to happen on year three? I, I mean, that just, I, you know, I'm from the government. I'm here to help. I don't like the way that sounds at all. So let's take a look at historically Arizona. When he's saying we're at a 30 year low, well, I can't go back 30 years, but I can go back to 2006, seven and eight. And we can look at extremes in our market. Now, heads up, this is a busy chart. We're just going to look at a couple numbers at a time. First thing I would look at is active listings. The most listings we've ever had here is 58,334 right here. And that was in 2007. The lowest number of listings we ever had was in 2022 was 8,162. Here's the kicker. Typical is 26,565. Now, could you imagine if we were at 26,000 listings now, what that would feel like? Because right now we're sitting here at 16,031. We went from 158 to 16,000. So we went up a couple hundred listings last week, according to Cromford Market. And that's active listings. And could you imagine 26,000? I mean, people are already saying now, man, there's a lot of houses for sale in my neighborhood. No, normal's about 26,000. So uh, what would that do to prices for crying out loud? That uh, And that's what everybody's waiting for. And when I look at my seven day moving average, the reason we have more listings this week is simply because new listings dropped last week. They went down and sales went down. So that's why there's a net of more listings on the market than what we've seen. John here says, look at home builder stocks. The sentiment is home builders will be profitable foreseeable future in Orange County. The complete lack of single family. Okay, folks, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I see some of you are still here. That's great. Um, I was going to relaunch a, a whole new live stream, but it turns out I can jump back into this. So that's what I get for saying that there were no interruptions uh, because of the geomagnetic storm. 
<laughs> it's kind of like the son said, oh, yeah, hold my beer. Um, so <laughs> I froze there. Things were twirling around a little bit. Uh, where I left off was John had a comment here that said, look at home builder stocks and sentiment that home builders will be profitable in the foreseeable future. Look at real estate stocks. They've been flying up. But I think more of that has to do with the fact that uh, they had good Q1 earnings reports and a lot of the lawsuits are starting to settle out now. Um, so um, in uh, MS, it sounds like your connection dropped too. Boy, it was, uh, you know, you never like it when you're doing a live stream and all of a sudden you go, breathe, start seeing that little buffering thing. Also, when you back up run and running to elaborate on an old cunt, OC, the building department is focusing on pushing high density housing over single family builds. We're seeing that here. I'm seeing multifamily housing just outpace a lot. Uh, although there's a big land auction now that's going to be up by the new uh, Taiwan chip plant. And that's going to be interesting to see. Now I left off talking about where our listings are today, 16,000. And we've had a historical high of 58,000, but the normal number of listings average for this market's 26,000. Uh, that would be incredible. I don't see us going up 10,000 listings anytime soon. The other things when you look at extremes here is, and we're talking about, you know, we're at a 30 year low, things are going to bounce back. Well, let's look at sales per month. The highest we've had in 2019 was 11,708. The lowest we've had for a month, 2008, that's when everything went to hell in the handbasket, was 2,517. And let me blow these numbers up just a hair for you. That's why I'm reading them to you. And the sales per month average, 7,165. So where are we? Well, here we are today. And uh, in April, we had 6,591. Not too bad. Uh, that's certainly not a 30-year low from what I see in our market. Now here, it's tracking May. But, you know, obviously the month isn't finished. So we're not, uh, we're not dying there. Um, if I look at the uh, months of supply, we had 20.6 again back in 2008. I mean, there wasn't a number we couldn't beat down any further in 2008. Less 0 0.9 months supply in 05. That's interesting. And uh, 4.2 is typically average months of supply. We are sitting at about 2.5 right now. So our months of supply is not low. So what does this mean? Well, it means that, you know, while the chief economist is saying that, you know, that it's impossible for us to stay this low for long, that's true. But what does he mean? How long? How long are we going to wait? We don't know. Here's our uh, listings here. This is uh, new listings by day, by month, the date, and it's showing our new listings are at 3,071 compared to this month last year was at 25. So new listings are up about 500 homes, nothing earth shattering there. Listings under contract, you can see that they went up a little bit and then they came down and they went up from 8,300 to 8,400 last week. Nothing major. They tend to go down the closer we get to summer here in Arizona. So, um, yes, uh, we could see things pick up. But it might not be till the end of 2025. We need help with rates and affordability. So when you talk about how we just can't stay this low forever, well, obviously we can't. Uh, but we can certainly sit it out for a while, and that's what that's what folks are doing. Now our interest rates, this is mortgage-backed security prices, are just kind of flatlining right now. They're just staying right where they have been. They're down to 7.16, which is certainly better than they were. Uh, at the beginning of last week when they were about 7.4. Um, but uh, um, CPI numbers coming out Wednesday. Man, if you're sitting down now wondering whether or not you should lock your rate or not, boy, get a hold of your lender who's looking at staring at the charts about every five minutes up until Wednesday to, to advise you because if the CPI comes in hot, ooh, that's not good for rates. If it comes in better, that's great for rates. So I, don't, I didn't look this morning to see what they're projecting, where the markets are, but the markets are pretty jittery. They're expecting CPI to kind of be hotter than what people expect. John says, which area in the one to two million range is taking the biggest hit with slowing and price drops and why those areas? Well, I'm seeing a lot of price drops, John, but I'm not seeing, uh, and 
it, I need to caution people on this. I think I talked about that on the, the last show that, that, and I'm going to pull up the price changes here. And that is that price changes don't necessarily mean sales price drops, like average price per square foot. It means you're not meeting your expectation. I'm asking $6,000 for this car. It's not worth a dime over 4,200. So if I drop the price down to 4,200, does that mean the price of used cars is dropping? That means no, somebody had to slap Rick on the side of the head and go, you're not going to get 6K for that car, Rick. And that's what we're seeing out there. But it's the price reductions. Um, the area is typically uh, Paradise Valley right now. And I'm going to pull up this price change sheet that we've got. And let's go above 2 million, I think, this time, because that's where I'm seeing a lot of it. So I'm going to go 2 million, 3 million, 5 million. And there's the number of price changes that we're seeing. Um, right there, there were 92. Now, what area? I'm going to spitball here and say that it's Paradise Valley. So let me look at that. Uh, Scottsdale, Paradise Valley right here. And because that's where the majority of our high-end inventory is. And this is it. So these are the big luxury homes out there. But you know what? It's 12 homes. So, um, but it's, it's, it's noticeable. It's noticeable that the high end, after hearing what their neighbors got, people just kind of flew it out there. And you'll notice this is happening before summer. Like we got to get this house sold before summer because, you know, who hangs around Phoenix in the summertime except people that have to. And, and so, so they're rushing to try and get their big buck out of their house before the summer season starts here and uh, month of may is usually a great time to sell month of june is a horrible time to move i think i mentioned on a show this uh weekend that said you know if you're calling your friends asking them to help you move in june they're going to be sorting their sock drawer they don't have time for you i'm not even going to help you move and i have a truck so the market is uh seasonal here in phoenix in uh june may and june's pretty good simply because a lot of schools start and uh and you don't want uh, you want to be moved before the end of July. So our schools do start in July. You get a couple of weeks off in October. I want to try and find the Crawford Market Index supply versus demand here, and we'll take a peek at it and make sure it pulls up the right month. Because sometimes you pull it up and it says February instead of April, and uh, and you guys don't like that. I don't either. Here it is. Look at that. They're both going up. Demand is going up on the index. And supply is going up. It's when they cross that we start to seeing price changes. Like back here in what I still call the silly season, demand was way up. Supply was still down. And then you can see where it crossed the opposite there. That was in 2022. So nothing earth shattering going on there. They're both kind of slowly rising at the same time. So as we look at our market, we really don't see any data that says, oops, here it comes. Things are going to get really busy. Or, oops, hold on, things are about to get really bad. And we're all taking a look at it and trying to figure out what's happening. A lot of opinions out there. Um, all we can do is look at the numbers and see what's going on. I also caution people, don't treat housing like a stock. I know a lot of people are looking at, you know, I can get a better return putting my money in the bank. Yeah, you can in the short term. Uh, you're not going to make 5% if you buy a house today and you sell it in two years. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but a lot of people want a permanent roof over their head. They want shelter. They want to buy. They're tired of the landlord raising the rent. They can't do that now because it's hard to get into a house. It's not hard to get in. It's hard to afford it once you're in. The payments are too high. So something has to adjust. Either our wages have to go up or the prices have to come down. And that could take a very long time. People can sit out longer than you think, Lawrence Young. Um, they may be sitting on their hands longer than... Uh, then he says, although he doesn't give us a timeline, he does say, and I'm going back to the beginning here where he said, you know, things are going to change. In addition, consumers may adjust to the feeling of permanently high inflation and looking for safe financial bets. That will drive more home buying decisions as consumers recognize real estate as an appreciating asset. You know, I get that and I, I agree, but I think if you're sitting back and you got a higher grocery bill, higher insurance payments, Higher car payments, higher everything, doesn't that doesn't make me go, okay, I guess, well, I can't afford a house. It doesn't. It just says, wow, I mean, I'm just getting kicked at every corner here. I don't can't see myself 
getting in. If you can't do it, you can't do it. And uh, so I think these economists that are going out there saying, well, people are getting used to this. Uh, newsflash, we're not. We're not getting used to this. We don't like it. I don't like the fact that everything's out of reach. At the same time, I do like the fact that the market's not on fire because there was nothing worse than going out and showing homes and not being able to get somebody into that home. I don't miss the days of pulling up with my client and seeing eight more cars out front. I'll never forget one house we went into. There was a line at the sidewalk and it was a house that needed to be torn down to the rafters and rebuilt. And people were lining up for this place. It was in the historic district. And this one agent pulls up and goes, I have an appointment at 10 15. So I'm going in. I said, look behind you. Everybody's got an appointment at 10 15. They did. They allowed overlapping appointments. She goes, well, I'm going in and you guys can wait. And she's telling about 15 of us. We can wait. I kind of turned around, looked at the crowd and go, follow me. And we all just walked in. <laughs> so some agents have a very uh, high opinion of themselves looking forward uh, to this week. And I know I've already mentioned it. This, I don't know if I mentioned it before I went dark or not, but CPI numbers coming out and uh, it's going to be the consumer price index for April. If it comes in hotter than expected, expect interest rates to go up, mortgage rates to go up. If it comes out as expected, obviously we're probably going to stay where we're at. Uh, you know, the central bank saying, well, we're going to stay here higher for longer. It just doesn't look like inflation is uh, tamping down anytime soon. And we have sticky inflation. You know, once the price goes up, do you ever see it come back down? Remember, I used to go in and see buyers when I was selling uh, bakery products and they would say, you know, every time flour goes up, you bring us a price increase. I never, never see you sitting across my desk when the price of flour goes down to say, Hey Tom, we're down 10 cents. And he's right. Uh, food companies rarely lower the price mostly because everything else goes up the opposite. And what we're seeing right now is we're all waiting for wages to go up, but forcing wages to go up like California's done with the $20 minimum wage is not the way to do it. The market has to gently follow that. And it takes time because the $20 minimum wage is a shock to the system because the prices haven't adjusted. Um, your rent hasn't adjusted and things start to implode. Now, one of the trends that we're seeing now is that work away from home is kind of starting to wane a little bit. And companies are saying, we'd like you to come back to the office. They're finally noticing in some sectors, that they get more productivity out of people when they're in the office versus working from home. And ironically, some people are saying, you know, I kind of miss the guys at the office. <laughs> I'm tired of just sitting at home by myself and microwaving food all day, sitting behind my computer. Now, some of you work very hard when you're working at home. Don't get me wrong. But here's an interesting statistic, too. Talking about real estate being as slow as it is. I read yesterday, 43% of individual real estate agents or teams are giving up their offices. And I don't mean big brokerages like HomeSmart or, or uh, uh, Century 21, but, you know, people like EXP where, you know, they were independent contractors. They're all independent contractors, but EXP doesn't have any offices. Either does real. So the agent goes out and gets their own office if they want one. 43% of them this year are saying, I can't afford it. I'm giving it up. So sales are down, and uh, uh, but they're not down everywhere. If you're out shopping in Chandler, Gilbert, or Tempe, um, you're going to find that you can't sit at home for a couple of days and think about whether or not you want to write an offer on that house. So it's it's pretty brisk. Just go down the 101 by the Intel plant, and it's pretty easy to understand why. So let's take a look. I will probably be back Wednesday afternoon. We'll talk about what's going on in the market and see uh, whether or not the CPI slapped us around a little bit or if it got better. I apologize on behalf of. Uh, the network that uh, we dropped off there for a minute, but thank you for hanging in there. I wasn't sure I could come back or not. So great to hear from everybody. Have a great Monday. Take on the rest of the week.